Welcome back. In this video we want to give a um, computation of homology groups just based on the axioms. And the spaces we want to compute are the spheres. So what's the easiest sphere? It's not the circle, it's actually S0, which is just the union of two points. Although I admit it's, it's a bit of a stretch to call it a sphere, but this is actually the right base case to start with. And S0 as a sum of two points can be dealt with a bit more general. We discuss first what happens to the homology of a topological sum of two spaces, something that I already alluded to in, in I think, the last video. Um, and I already said that if you have homology theory, then the homology of a topological sum of two spaces is just the direct sum of the two homology. Uh, homologies of the two spaces. And I almost gave the argument and now we complete this argument. So let H star be a homology theory. So we're really dealing with uh, most general context, not even assuming the dimension axiom. And the statement I want to make is that the homology of X topological sum with Y is isomorphic to the direct sum. Okay, so maybe a bit of notation. So this star is short for, for any n. So that's the same as writing set of star n. And writing here for all n. All right, and we will very often use this star um, notation to indicate that this is generically true for all degrees. Mm -hmm. And one has to be careful here because some authors also use the star for the direct sum over all degrees. But this is not what we want that's, to do. That's yeah. true. That's true. We, we want always to have to be careful. Just <laughs> one instance, yes. And the context is important, yeah. Well, it's not just any isomorphism. Um, the isomorphism comes from the inclusion. So there is the inclusion from X to the topological sum. And this inclusion induces a map from HNX to HN of the topological sum. And these two induced maps form the isomorphism. Okay, so how do we see that? I already mentioned that this comes from the long exact sequence plus excision. And the long exact sequence of the pair X topological sum with y and then we take y as the subspace gives us the following. So we have here h, well it starts somewhere. Here we have h n plus one of the relative group. Then it goes to the subspace and h n x the relative group again. Well, maybe one more. And so on. So <clears throat> this is a long exact sequence and excision can be applied to the relative group. So the relative group um, I mean, what, what do we excise? We excise the space Y. Satisfies this um, topological properties because it's a topological sum. I mean, the topological assumptions in the statement of the excision. And if we excise Y, what we get is an isomorphism to the homology of x comma empty set, so just the homology of x. 
similarly here for hn. Ah, made a mistake. Made a mistake, it should be the sum here, not just x. All right, now we can say a bit more about this long exact sequence um, because look at this map here. This is the inclusion, but there's also a map back. There is a map from the topological sum back to y. Um, what is the map? Well, on y we take just the identity and x we just map to some point in y. So and that's not canonical. Mm -hmm. Well, not canonical, but there is a map. Mm -hmm. And this map has the property that if you go first with the inclusion from y to the sum and back, it is the identity on y. Yes. Mm -hmm. and by the functoriality of the functor hn, the same is true on the hn groups. So this gives us a map, which I indicate by red, back such that if you go from here to there, and back, then you get the identity. And of course, this can be done in any degree. So there will also be something which is not, the domain is not on the uh, whiteboard anymore, but there is this map here. And what this tells us is that this map here is injective because if an element here would go to zero, then you could go back and it would be the identity. So this element would be zero. So in particular, all these maps are injective, which I indicate by this hook. And what does exactness of this sequence tell us? Well, the kernel of this map, which is zero, because it's injective, is the same as the image of this map. So the image of this map here is zero, meaning that the map itself is the zero map. And the same would be true here in any uh, corresponding degree. And this means that this long exact sequence splits into a sequence of short exact sequence, a sequence, maybe I should yeah. say, splits into a bunch of short exact sequences. And what happened here? So we get short exact sequences that look like that. If that was the long exact sequence here was exact and you have a zero here and you could just write this sequence with a zero here um, and, and then this, this sequence is exact. And again, exactness at this spot, for example, with a zero here just means that this map is injective. All so right. that's, that's an interesting general behavior of these exact sequences. Yeah, one, one has once one has found an injective map, one gets for, for, for free that the previous map is zero, which means that the map before the zero map is a surjective map. So this is sort yeah. of all decoded in this exactness. Right, that this happens here. So this yeah. zero here means that this map is uh, a surjective map. Mm -hmm. We could also somehow um, saying that this here is short, ex this short exact sequence is exact would be the same as saying without the zeros, that it is exact here, and this is injective, and this is subjective. Mm -hmm. Now, this short exact sequence splits. Splitting means, that's just terminology, it means that we have a map like that, such that this composition here is the identity on, in that case, H and Y. Mm -hmm. And it's a general lemma about short exact sequences of R modules, that if you have a split at this position, then you also have a split here, and the middle term actually is the direct sum of the two outer terms. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have a split here, then you automatically get a split here, and again, the statement is true that the middle term is the direct sum of the two outer terms. So that's an exercise, 
that will lead to you. Um, just record the consequence of that. And it's important that it's true in the category of R modules or in the category of abelian groups. It's not always true. Yeah? It's, it's not, not true, true in the category of groups. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, you need an abelian category. Okay, mm -hmm. so consequence is that we get that Hn is the direct sum of this. The isomorphism, again, is not any isomorphism. It is induced by this map and this map. And we had this excision isomorphism, which was here. So the, this term here was actually um, HNX. And that was the statement we wanted to prove that topological sum uh, gives you a direct sum of the corresponding homology modules. And in particular, this gives us the first computation of the homology of spheres. So H N of S zero, which we declare as a sphere, is the direct sum of the homology, uh, well, H N of points, the two points. Now, to do actual computation, we need to know something about the homology of a point, and therefore we assume the dimension axiom uh, in the following. So let's assume that the homology theory satisfies the dimension axiom. And to be concrete, let's say that H star is a homology theory with uh, values in abelian groups. Uh, and let's say that we have the following. So if we compute homology of a point, then we get this. And we take this because um, the singular homology groups that Holger introduced uh, will be shown to satisfy this dimension axiom. Mm -hmm. So all the computations we do now, just on the axioms, will be a computation for singular homology group in the end after we've shown that they actually do satisfy these axioms. Okay, so let's start with the next sphere, which is the circle. Here's a picture of the circle. And we have to somehow use all we have. So we have to use homotopy invariance. We have to use uh, the excision axiom and the long exact sequence. So the long exact sequence has to be applied to subspaces. And the subspaces we take are the hemispheres, which are here just these half circles. And let me call the upper half circle D1 plus and the lower half circle D1 minus. So the upper half circle is automorphism at D1 an interval, so it makes sense to call it D1, D1 plus, and we have D1 minus. And then we have at the equator a sphere of a dimension less. In general, Sn has an equator which is just Sn minus one. Well, in that case, the equator is just these two points here. So this is an S zero. So that's how we build up this circle. And this is also how we build up the higher dimensional spheres later to do this computation. Now, I want to apply excision first and for that, I look at the relative group of S1 and D1 plus. Okay, let's do that for any N. Okay, and 
Well, if you apply excision, you have to excise another subspace. And the subspace that we excise has to be a subspace that satisfies this property that um, its closure is contained in the interior of this D1 plus. So we could take something like that, which is also a half circle, but a half circle which is a bit smaller, all right, so that its closure is in the interior of D1 plus. And okay, just for the purpose of this computation, let's call it D plus plus one. A little bit smaller, and we excise this subspace. And if you do that, then you get this isomorphism, which is induced by the inclusion of S1 minus this D1 plus plus. And here we have D1 plus minus D1 plus plus, right? We have this inclusion here which induces a map in the homology group. It happens to be an isomorphism by excision. Now, what are these spaces? If you look at this space S1 minus D1 plus plus, then this is this lower half circle, but um, it's a bit bigger than D1 minus, so it's a, it's a thickened up version of D1 minus, and D1 minus still includes, of course, as a subspace into this. So if you look at this inclusion of this pair, and here I write the equator, which is S0, then we have an inclusion of pairs, and this induces a map in Hn, right? Because what is, what is this? What is D plus one minus D one plus plus? These are just, um, if you write it maybe here, uh, take another color. So that space here is a slightly bigger version of D one minus, and this space here is something like, it looks like this. So two very short intervals. And we have this inclusion and you see that this inclusion is actually homotopy equivalence of pairs. And therefore, by the homotopy invariance, okay, homotopy invariance said that if you have two homotopic maps of um, pairs, uh, sorry, <laughs> homotopic maps of pairs of spaces, then they are the same, but this by the contrariety implies that if I have a homotopy equivalence of pairs, it's actually an isomorphism of homology groups. So this is an isomorphism, and if you follow these arrows here, then this, of course, is also an isomorphism, and it's an isomorphism induced by the inclusion of these pair into this pair. So what I did here in this little argument is I basically uh, wanted to apply excision right away by um, excising the interior of D plus one. But that I couldn't do because this, this topological assumption of closure being contained in the interior was not satisfied. But I could tweak this a little bit, um, thicken up this a little bit, and then uh, argue with homotopy uh, equivalence to see that we could still argue um, as if excision would hold um, in, in that situation. Yeah, so this issue about sort of taking small neighborhoods and going a bit into the interior of spaces, that's somewhat reminiscent of what we had to do already at the, when applying the theorem of Seifert van Kampen. There uh, we had similar problems and um, actually there we improved a version of Seifert van Kampen for push outs to sort of get rid of this. And something similar is also the plan for this lecture. So at some point we're gonna see the Maya Vitor sequence for push outs, which sort of avoids these um, arguments that you have to 
push a bit into the interior of spaces. But yeah, yeah this that's excision come statement next. in the original form is somehow not the. In, in most cases, it's not the form that is most natural to apply mm -hmm. if you deal with reasonable spaces. Um, and we will formalize this kind of arguments um, to get a version that is immediately applicable to the situation we're interested in. But, well, for now, we just have the axioms and everything we do is out of the axioms. So, what did we gain from this? Well, we have two relative singular homology groups. They are isomorphic. And we could now apply the long exact sequence to both of these relative groups, see what happens, see what information we get out of it, and then apply in the end this isomorphism as well to combine the information about the long exact sequences. So let's just see what happens. And we start with the long exact sequence for S1, D1 plus. LES for S1, D1 plus. How does it look like? It starts, well, it never starts anywhere because it's an infinite sequence, but I cannot write all the parts. We start at HN D plus 1, and then we have HN. S1, and then the relative group, which we consider now. And then the boundary homomorphism takes us to H and minus one um, of uh, D1. And I think that's enough. All right. So let's analyze this sequence. Um, what we immediately see in this sequence is that we have a very easy space here. We have this D1 plus, which is up to homomorphism, just an interval. So this is a contractible space. If we include any point into this D plus one, it will be a homotopy equivalence. So we could write here HN of a point take the inclusion of any point, it will induce an isomorphism because D plus one is contractible. So we know what the homology of that part is, but we know even more. So there's always a map from S1 to a point. I mean, there's from, from any space, there is a map to the point from any non-empty space. <laughs> it's the empty space a space. It's yes, a space. of course. Of course it's a space. And there's also a map. From S1, for S from any non-empty space, there is a map to the point. But as you bring in, there's also a map from the zeros uh, from the empty space to the point. Yes, that's yeah. <laughs> okay. And as you're bringing it up, this was also a problem in the argument you did before when there was the disjoint union of X and Y. You were constructing a map in the other direction and said you map right. everything to a point. So at that point, you had to assume that um, this X or Y, I don't know which one, uh, has to be non-empty. No. No? If one of these spaces would be empty, then you would take the map from the empty space to the other space, which is... Ah, it would start in the empty set. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> what, what do we see from that? Never discuss the empty set. Yeah. Never. So, in that case, we definitely have a map from S1 to the point, just mapping everything to the point. What else could you do? And this induces a map like that. And now what do we see? Well, we see that if you start here at the point, this is the inclusion of to any point in D plus one, then you include further to S one and you go back to the point. So this composition going first to here and then going back like that is on the level of spaces, just the identity on the point. Therefore, it's on the level of HN by functoriality, the identity. Therefore, yeah, there, there is a split, right? You go to HNS1 and there is a map back. Now, since there is an isomorphism here, this amounts to a map back to here. 
which splits in the sense that if you go from here to there and back, it is the identity, right? So this arrow, this red arrow is just this composition and we are now in a situation similar to the situation before that we have a long exact sequence and suddenly we have a split and now this split of this one map will split the whole long exact sequence into short exact sequences. Because this, what I explained here, um, is true at any degree. So we also have it here. Okay. Draw it like that. And let's think about the consequence again. We did it before, but it's, it's good to do it twice. So um, going from here, and back is the identity. This means that we have injective maps, right? Like that. And again, exactness as before told us that then it should be a zero map here. And it should be a zero map here and this happens throughout. Okay, so we have a bunch of short exact sequences. And this whole thing splits. Um, yeah, let, let me write them again. Together with this split. Well, and that's something because now we know that this homology group we're interested in, this HnS1, is a direct sum of something that we know because it's Hn of a contractible space, it's therefore Hn of a point, plus this relative group. And this relative group was already somehow related to another relative group, so we had some information about that as well. So I would call this progress. Let's write this for the record, Hn um, of S1 is isomorphic, and this is for all n, to Hn of e plus 1 plus this relative group. Right, and let's also write that we have this isomorphism to Hn of a point which um, whose homology is known or assumed to be known by the dimension exit. All right, so that's the analysis of the first long exact sequence. Now let's go to the other long exact sequence. Uh, let's uh, remind ourselves what this was. Okay, so this was the first we analyzed and now we do a separate analysis of the sequence of the pair D1 minus S0. And hopefully we'll see after that the homology of the circle. All right, so this is, what was it, T D1 minus? So let's write it. We have maybe I should start uh, to the left to make more efficient use of the space here. H and S zero. Then we have H and D one minus. Then the relative group. And then it goes down to Hn minus with the boundary homomorphisms. And then it goes on. And 
we have, a, well, something is similar. We have a space which is contractible. That's something that we exploited and we exploited again. So here, if we take the inclusion of one point space, this will be an isomorphism, all right? And therefore, we get a map also to this, maybe I do this in red, So we have a map here, and this map here is induced by the inclusion of the point to, well, one of the points of the zero. It actually doesn't matter uh, which point uh, we take for the argument. Okay, so include the point to, I don't know, the left point of S0, and this induces your map. Now, what about the compositions now? Um, if we... Yes, okay, so if you start here and follow this to Hn um, d minus one, then, ah, sorry, what, no, that, that's not what I wanted to say. I want to say that I get therefore also a map like this. Okay, so what is this? I want to split somehow the map that we see here, which is induced by the inclusion of S0 to D1 minus. What is this red arrow here? Well, it's going down this isomorphism and going up to Hn0. So this red upper bent arrow does not come from the level of spaces, right? That's really just the morphism now in homology. Right. But this was similar as before because we had somehow the, the split defined on the level of spaces for the for the point, but then, then we used this isomorphism mm -hmm. to get it really to see it really in the long exact sequence. Now I'm claiming so again, this is by definition going like that and then taking this error um, which is induced by the inclusion. Um, somehow it feels better to write this in black. I know, but then it comes from the level of spaces, right? I mean, this, it, it's sending right. the whole disk oh to yeah. a point oh and yeah. then sending it to one right. of the, the right. two points. I was Just confused. send any yes. point on D1 minus yeah, yeah, to yeah. the left point in S0. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm sorry. And that's, that's the map here. And if you start, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> so, Maybe let me recap, um, because you could first forget about this uh, point for a sec, okay? Forget about this. And this map here is the inclusion of S0 into D1 minus, and the map back is, um, thanks <laughs> to what you said, um, induced by mapping any point in D1 minus to the left point. And immediately on the space level, we see that if we go first to the left and then to the right, this is the identity of H and D1 minus. So we don't need this description with the point to, to see the split. But then um, this is an additional information because the fact that this is contractible gives, gives us actually a computation of that group. So let's record this additional information. But we have this split on the space level. All right, and we do have that at any point in the long exact sequence. And what does this mean? Um, it's slightly different as before. Before we had going first the map in the long exact sequence and then the split was the identity. Now it's taking first the split and then the map in the long exact sequence that gives us the identity. Um, but what does that mean? It means that this map here is subjective, right? Because a pre-image of an element here is obtained by just following uh, the image of this element under this red arrow. Mm -hmm. So this is subjective and we indicate this by this double arrow here. And the same we also have 
here. So again, exactness, if that map is surjective, it means the image is everything, but the image is also the kernel of this map. So this is a zero map and the same here. So again, we have a splitting of the long exact sequence into a bunch of short exact sequences. And I think it's, it's good to write it down. So short exact sequences. And let's not forget that we also have this uh, splits. But now you see we, we start with a split on the right of the short exact sequences. Before it was on the left. But again, this general lemma about short exact sequences of R modules gives us that the whole exact sequence splits. And the middle term is the direct sum. Let's write that down. And we have that um, the outer terms give us Hm minus of a zero. And uh, now we can actually say something, right? Because Again, as before, this is just the homology of a point. Whereas this is just the homology of the direct sum of two points. This implies an actual computation, which I write down now. So the consequence of this is, since we have this dimension axiom now, that Hn So let me first write it. It's um, the following. We only have something in degrees Uh, we only have something in degree one. That's the, that's the result. Why is that? Well, if n is not equal to one, what do we have here? Then we have a homology of a point in a degree not zero, and the same here. And these vanish by the dimension axiom. So this term is zero, this term is zero, definitely this term is zero. Only case where something happens is n equals to one, but then we have H zero of a point. So we have two copies of C here, and here we have one copy, and that has to be then the remaining copy of C. So it has to be that. So now we have an actual computation. And now we remember what we have from above. From above we had that um, this space, let's check, right? That was our initial excision argument, this space here is the same as this one. So we do have a computation of the homology of S1 relative to D1 plus. So let's bring that down. This was the same as Hn of S1 D1 plus. And let's bring another piece of information down, which was we already got from the long exact sequence of that pair some information on the absolute homology group of S1. So let's try to remember, I mean, let's, let's look it up, not try to remember what we, what we had here. This was this computation here, right? 
So Hn as one was the sum of of this, right? So let's see better. Bring it down. And there, it was also important that we had split short exact sequences, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know if we put it down explicitly. Well, in both cases, it's important to remember this: that being split injective or split surjective, that's really more than just being injective or surjective. All right. So we have all the information we obtained so far. We have a concrete computation of that relative group and now we just plug things in because that is also known and final result from from this is that h1 sorry not h1 hn in, in general of s1 is now isomorphic to zero if the degree is not zero or one in in degrees one or zero we get the integers um, if that was too quick just just look at this again All right so let's check the case n equals to one or let's check the case n is not one and it's also not zero then we have here definitely zero because the homology of a point. Here it's also zero by this computation. Everything is zero. If n is equal to one, then the homology of a point here vanishes. But we still have this, right? Because that existed in just in degree one and for degree zero, it's the same. Then the homology comes from that piece and that will be zero. So that's a complete computation of the homology of the circle. And I think one can see the pattern now. Um, to compute the homology of a sphere is now an inductive process. So inductively, and using the decomposition as, I mean the decomposition we use for a circle, writing the sphere as the union of two hemispheres glued together along the equator, which is in the, in the general case Sn minus one, or maybe I write D, D-dimensional sphere union along the equator S D minus one. One obtains that Hn of S D is, and this is really the same computation, Hn of dd minus sd minus one, or z if n is equal to zero, by the same argument, and this will be z or n, zero d, and zero in all the other cases. Yeah, and well, in case d equals zero, one should think about it like this, that I mean, the, the homology of the spheres always have two z summons, one in degree zero and one in degree the dimension of the sphere. For the zero sphere, this means the two z summons fall into the same degree, therefore h zero of s zero is z plus z. I never thought about that, but <laughs> you're right. That's a good way to remember. Because if you write it down like this, it, it doesn't include the case d equals zero. Yeah, yeah. And to prove that, that's a really good exercise that I re recommend to everybody. It's the same proof. So you analyze the, the short exact sequence of SD and that by excision. You can relate it to the uh, long exact sequence of this other uh, pair, uh, which is the pair dd equator s d minus one and of course you have to use the induction hypothesis so the induction hypothesis is the computation of the homology of this equator sphere s d minus one and then exactly the same analysis gives you that result 